So I've been collecting ashes from the barbecue grill over a period of months now. This is what remains from the ashes. And what I did is I basically just took what was inside here and ran it through um, basically like a, a screen for a window. So that way the ash would fall through, but then the remainder of the carbon, the charcoal would stay separated from it and the end result is basically I have a large portion a good amount here of cigarette uh, cigarette ash of uh, charcoal uh, ash okay from the grill okay this is a lot what I've got down in here okay but very little charcoal is inside there and that's the point so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put water in this and we're going to basically make a slurry. So I've just been mixing this for not even 30 seconds. Um, but I want everything to be broken up in there and suspended and we have a nice thick mixture here, but I'm going to add a little bit more water to this um, Ash another name for it is potash or potash depending on where you're from and um, it Has a lot of potassium in it hence pot potash potassium, okay? And water is made up of H2O, so there's more hydrogen, right? H2, two hydrogens per oxygen. So when we mix these together, we're going to end up getting hydrogen. Um, I'm sorry, we're going to get, when we mix these two together, we're going to get potassium hydroxide. Okay, so we've got our potassium, we have our hydrogen, and we have our oxide, we have our oxygen. But it needs to leach, it needs to stay in here for a while. And I'm going to say that is probably good. And so I'm going to let this basically be suspended in this water. Pretty much like this. Leave it outside. A few days, perhaps. And um, let this water absorb as much potassium as it possibly can. This ash should sink to the bottom. And when it does, I should have somewhat of a clear liquid that I can um, decanter or decant off of this. And it's basically going to be a very light form of lye. And that's going to be the first thing that we're going to need to make. So it's been setting for a few days and now you can see the top has cleared up quite a bit. Now this is basically lye water that is probably not very concentrated, um, but we're going we're gonna to concentrate this. Now if you want this to be stronger with all these ashes in here, you can just boil all of it, right? Just boil all of it 15-20 minutes and then this will be actually be stronger, okay? But um, setting for a few days like this should be adequate enough to take enough of that potassium out of that that potash there or potash depending um, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but when you're using ash you want to use hardwood like you don't really want to use um, Ash from trees that are have a lot of resin like pine and dug fir and things like that um, you want to use something that's like hardwood. Now this is mesquite, and I know mesquite's got resin in it, so I'm not completely sure how this is going to turn out. Okay, but um, that's that. And also, um, this particular soap that we're going to end up making, um, it's not going to be really as hard as store-bought soap. And store-bought soap, you know, they put a lot of, they put other stuff in there, right? Um, and also, they use sodium hydroxide. This is potassium hydroxide. Um, and this is a little bit denser, but we're going to end up kind of cheating the system a little bit later by adding a little salt to this so that way it hardens a little bit better. And then also, um, this is not going to lather up like you would 
um, see like a normal bar. So that is because they add stuff to it. Okay. Um, nowadays, soap is more like a detergent, but this will clean. You know, this will clean your clothes. This will clean your. This will clean your uh, dishes. This will clean your hands. This will. This will clean. This is old school soap. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this water, try to leave as much ash behind as possible. If you want to run this through a t-shirt or something like that, you can in order to try to get some more of this uh, debris out of here. It's cool. Um, if not, don't worry. It's, a lot of this stuff is going to end up separating when we start reducing it. But I'm going to pour this in a stainless steel pot. You don't want to put this in aluminum. okay? You want to put this in stainless steel or glass. Um, lye reacts to metals so make sure that you don't do that so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pour this and then we'll go to the next step there's a little bit of ash coming out with this right now and I'm trying to prevent that as much as I can a little bit is gonna be okay Okay, so there's still a little bit of water in here, um, but we'll let that sit. Technically, I could put more water in that, and like I said, I could boil it, and I'll end up having uh, a more concentrated lye, uh, lye water. So, um, and this is just an old T-shirt that's been outside for a long time, from the last time actually I did this. So, so I've got this on the stove. During the time that this is heating up, this can create some pretty nasty fumes that you really don't want to be breathing. Um, so it's probably better you do this outside. Now my stove is just a couple of few feet from a sliding glass door, so my door is open. And I'm going to be monitoring this, so if it starts smelling too uh, nasty or whatever like that, too toxic, I'll just turn the, the heat off and take it outside. And then figure out a way to finish it outside, but I've done this before. And it wasn't really too bad or anything inside here, but just word of warning, you are dealing with lye here. So we're going to go ahead and start um, bringing this to a boil. And also, how do we know when this is concentrated enough? Well, we're going to be doing the old egg test, which also works uh, with a potato. If we take an egg or a potato and then we put it in the water, it should float. And this one does not, okay? So that tells us this is not concentrated enough. Let me go rinse this off and rinse my hands off. And when this thing floats and it starts kind of coming out of the top a little bit, that tells us right there that this is the proper concentration. I'm going to let this reduce probably about uh, two and a half or three inches, and then I'm going to try the potato again. Um, and then because we want to have we want to have a concentrated lye water. Um, when you're making soap, it's really important that the the um, ratio between lye water and fat is, you know, pretty much on the money. Now, back in the day, they didn't have a bunch of fancy measuring equipment when they were doing this out and about. Um, it was just through experience and testing and stuff like that when they were able to do it. And that's pretty much how we're going to do it. Um, generally, as a rule of thumb, um, at least for um, if you were making uh, like crystals because if we just kept boiling this and then turn the temperature down to where it was just kind of evaporating eventually we'd have lye crystals okay which would be as concentrated as we can get it so let's go ahead and let this uh, continue let's, we're just going to let this boil for a while and um, as soon as this reduces um, it'll clear up to it'll clear up to during you know during the time that this heating up but um, we're just going to go ahead and let this kind of boil down concentrate a little bit Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the lye um, water that has reduced considerably and we're going to pour it in here and try to keep a lot of the stuff that's on the bottom on the bottom so we can um, clean this out and then concentrate it some more. So the pan has been cleaned out and um, the lye water has been clarified fairly well um, if I let it rest for about five minutes some more ash will fall to the bottom of the container I'm not completely worried about that so let's go ahead and pour this back in
and I'm going to rinse this container out, but I'm going to let this go ahead and continue boiling down a little bit more. Okay, so the egg is floating, and the amount of egg that is basically showing up on the top of it is about the size of a quarter, which is about right. Um, so we have our lye water, and it's to the right concentration. So to kind of give you an idea of exactly how much we have left over after we boiled all of that down. So this is about how much we've got left after all of that boiling it down and stuff like that. Okay, so I've got a pan right now that I just rinsed out. I mean, pot. This is the same one that I was making the lye water in and concentrating it. Um, there's a little bit of water inside here. I'm just going to let that evaporate. And... Um, what I'm going to do is, um, as soon as this evaporates, or I just take a paper towel to speed this up. This is on low, okay? This is on a, a low temperature. And uh, I've got one cup of lard, okay? One cup of lard. And we're going to go ahead and melt this. We don't want this to get too hot. We're just trying to melt it. We want this to stay just a... We basically want this at a temperature that keeps it in a liquid state, but not much hotter than that, right? So maybe like 110, 120 maybe, maybe 130 or something along those lines. Um, and during the time that this is melting down, I'm going to get 3 eighths of a cup, 3 eighths of a cup of um, the concentrated lye water that I had made. As soon as this melts the rest of the way, we'll go ahead and we'll pour our uh, lye water in here. And uh, during the time that we're going to be stirring it, we don't really want to be using a metal spoon. Um, and uh, once again, I'm using stainless steel here, um, not using aluminum. Um, but I want to use like a wooden spoon or maybe some plastic, something that the uh, lye is not going to start eating. So I'm going to call that good. And then now we're going to go ahead and we're going to pour our lye water in here. And that's pretty much going to be the ratio is for every cup of fat, we're going to use 3 eighths of a cup of the lye water. Okay. And a few things about uh, wood ash soap. Okay few things. This is, this is very, very old school, you know. Um, first is, this is going to end up being softer than um, the type of soap that you'd buy in the store, generally, okay. Um, now, if we want to make sure that this gets a little hard, we can go ahead and we can put salt in here, maybe like a teaspoon or so. And then that will, that will harden this a little bit more. So here's a little bit of just regular salt. This is not um, iodized salt. This is sea salt. Okay. Now technically, that's something that you would want to heat up and get it to dissolve completely. But I think it's going to dissolve just fine in this. Um, and basically, we're just going to keep stirring this. And then the, the stirring, uh, it can take a while. Um, it can take anywhere from 30 minutes to 3 hours, 4 hours, 5 hours, it, who, who knows. But we're going to go ahead and we're just going to keep stirring this until we get to what's known as a trace. And a trace is, um, think of this where it turns into something that looks like pudding. And if you put your um, fork or something through it, um, it'll leave a mark in there. And like it'll stay, right? And you want to make sure that when you're doing this, you don't let this mixture get too cold because if it gets too cold, um, let me turn this down. If it gets, uh, I turned the heat off completely. Um, if you get, if this gets too hot, it'll actually cause separation. So we don't want to do that. Like it, at first it'll help bind everything, but then it'll cause separation. Um, now, where was I? Oh, if it gets too cold, you can get what's known as a false trace, where it looks like it's kind of solidified, but it's really just because it's gotten too cold and the fat is starting to set up. Okay, so you want to keep this warm, but not really too hot at all. So, I mean, it was on low. I just turned the fire off, 
and this is probably going to be good at this temperature for probably a good 10 minutes and I'm just going to continue um, stirring this allowing the uh, saponification process to continue and homemade soap like this uh, made from lye um, from wood ash like I said it's generally softer it doesn't usually smell very good you can add fragrance to this if you want but yeah what's the point this is the type of stuff that you would only make if you absolutely have to anyway there's there's really no reason for you to to make this other than just for the sake of saying that you know how to make soap from wood ash you know um, but if you do add a fragrance you want to use something like an essential oil or something you don't want to use anything water-based you want to use something that's oil-based if you want to use one of those um, hand mixers to speed up the process you can do that if you want to okay but we're just going to say and we're just going to keep stirring this and let the saponification process happen now um, this will work to bathe you know you this you know so you can bathe yourself you can use this to clean clothes you can use this to clean dishes um, this is an all-around uh, soap it's an all-around soap so but we're just gonna keep doing this for a while so I've been stirring this for about 15 minutes or so and I can feel that it's getting a little thicker um, you can definitely smell that beef fat and that's that's one of the, the things about traditional soap like this is you know it, like I mentioned before it doesn't really smell that fantastic um, but it does clean it's not going to make a lot of uh, bubbles you know like suds but uh, bubbles and suds don't add anything to the cleaning process so it's basically just for appearance quite honestly um, but we're going to keep working this until we can get a trace okay so this is definitely starting to thicken um, but it's not quite there yet um, I'm going to give it about another 15 minutes okay so I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a little bit more lye water to this I think I needed to concentrate my lye water a little bit more but um, I'm getting close to a trace but um, it's taking a long time so I'm going to add a little bit more lye water and keep stirring it okay it's definitely thicker problem is is like you know you add the lye water and if it's not com if it's not concentrated enough you're adding water to the solution as well so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna stir this for maybe like another 20 minutes and then after that I'm gonna call it good I mean it's 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 definitely a lot thicker than it was but I don't really want to spend all day on this and not only that but I think I could have concentrated my lye water a little bit more um, and then this would definitely probably already would have uh, started tracing um, but it's it's getting there it's, it's getting there it's just taking a while that extra water is going to end up keeping this stuff a lot more liquid than um, originally I wanted but as long as it still works you know as long as it still works and hey we're good you'll see that it's really close to tracing now it's like really close um, and with that extra water that's in there I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this to, to trace completely but it, it's it's really close I mean because you can see that this is almost like a pancake batter like a thin pancake batter um, and ideally we'd want it to be thicker than this we want to be able to see that trace if I go like this I want to be able to see you know that that um, line that the fork has made god that trace is so close I'm so close to that trace it's, it, it's driving me crazy you know um, man I, I think that if I would have like maybe taken a maybe another cup of water out of the uh, lye water th this would be this would be money um, man that's the problem though. you know when you're MacGyvering stuff and you're doing things the old-fashioned way so 
I've been stirring this a little bit more. It's thickened a lot more. And you can see that it's it's almost it's almost traced. It's definitely almost traced. I mean, when I move this back and forth, it takes a second for it to kind of fill up that gap. It needs to be thicker than this, quite honestly. But I think because of that water, the lye water that I used, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this as thick as it needs to be, but it's definitely thickened quite a bit. I'm going to give this maybe another 10 minutes, <laughs> and then I, I'm going to give up because it's just like I'm kind of kind of over this already. I've been stirring for so long. Okay. <clears throat> we have a trace. We have a trace. Do you see that? That is a trace. And that looks good. That looks good. Man, I was thinking it was never going to happen. But, okay, we're, we're good to go. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this um, and pour it into a mold and um, basically let it sit there for a day or so to harden up. Um, and what I'm going to use as a mold is just a plastic cup. Okay, so I went ahead and I uh, poured it inside this container and uh, I'm going to put a paper towel over the top of it and um, let this basically just kind of set up and wait till it solidifies um, and then as soon as it does I'm going to take it flip it upside down um, cut it into the pieces that I you know want for the soap and then uh, just let it set for like four to six weeks let it kind of cure um, even though I've got a trace on this and generally when you're when you're making soap with regular lye which is sodium hydroxide and this is potassium hydroxide um, generally what will happen is the next day it'll be hard enough that you can cut it into pieces but this might stay soft um, it's hard to say now I did put a little bit of salt in there um, and this has got a good trace so who knows we might get lucky hard to say but that's that guys the rest of it is just waiting now so um, that's how you go about making soap from wood ash so anyway hopefully you learned something from it and um, whatnot and like I said this stuff is like a science man um, the ratios have to be like really close to being right on the money or you're going to end up having a, a nasty product so it, it won't work and a lot of times you're going to be doing a lot of experiments you're going to be doing batches and batches and batches until you actually get something that actually works you know um, now I'm not really a soap maker um, even though I know how to do it and obviously and then all you know I'm more like candle maker that's more along my lines but um, this is going to work. This is going to work. So, anyway, guys, till next time. Talk to you later.